Hey everyone, welcome back to my tech channel. As I already shared with you all, I am creating a series of iOS interview questions and answers. So here I am with another 15 questions. If you have yet not watched my previous videos, I have added the links in the description section below. You can check there. Let's start with our third part. Question number 31. Consider the two methods below. First one is application will finish launching with options and second one is application did finish launching with options. What is the usage of these methods and what is the difference between them? So both the methods are present in the appdelegate.swift file. They are used to add functionality to the app when the launching of app is going to take place. The main difference between these two methods are as follow. First one, let's see uh, application will finish launching with options. So this method is your app's first chance to execute code at launch time. And second is application did finish launching with options. So this method allows you to perform any final initialization before your app is displayed to the user. Next question, weak versus unknown. So first let's see weak. It will not increase the retain count, so it will not have a strong reference point for that particular property. So the property which you are creating with a weak attribute, it will be easily deallocated. So it does not protect the object from being deallocated by ERC. On deallocation, weak object will set to nil. Weak properties can be optional. Weak also creates getters and setters. Now unknown. Uh, so it does not increase the retain cycle, but on deallocation it will not be set to nil. So unknown objects will not be set to nil. It will be just deallocated by ERC. So while using unknown references, make sure that it is not optional and it is uh, it always has some value. Important note, it is important that you use unknown reference only when you really know that the object will never be nil. Once it has been set, weak can be nil, unknown can never be nil. Next, explain weak self and unknown self. So both weak and unknown references do not create a strong hold on the referred object. They don't increase the retain count in order to prevent ARC from deallocating the referred object. A weak reference allows the possibility of it to become nil. This happens automatically when the referenced object is deallocated. Therefore, the type of your property must be optional. So you as a programmer are obligated to check it before you use it. Basically, the compiler forces you as much as it can to write safe code. Now, unknown does, it, does the same work as weak does with one exception. The variable will not become nil and therefore the variable must be an optional. An unknown reference presumes that it will never become nil during its lifetime. An unknown reference must be set during initialization. This means that the reference will be defined as an optional type sorry, as a non-optional type that can be used safely without checks. If some, if somehow the object being referred to is deallocated, then the app will crash when the unknown reference will be used. Here is an example. As you can see, first one is button press closure. So this won't happen after view controller closes. So here we can use unknown self, whereas uh, we can use weak for network call because it could be called anytime after view controller closes. So there are fair chances that we get this variable nil as well. So here we should use weak instead of unknown. If you have a closure to handle a response from a network request, use weak because they are long lived. The view controller could close before the request completes, so self no longer points to a valid object when the closure is called. If you have closure that handles an event on a button, this can be unknown because as soon as the view controller goes away, the button and any other items it may be referencing from self goes away at the same time. The closure block will also go away at the same time. In conclusion, if self could be nil in the closure, then use weak self. And if self will never be nil in the closure, then use unknown self. Next question, what is ID in Objective-C? 
ID is a type of any data type. It specifies a reference to any Objective C object. Question number 35. What are categories in Objective C? Categories provide the ability to add functionality to an object without changing the actual object. Subclassing is one way to add functionality to an object but avoiding unnecessary subclassing by using a category will help reduce the amount of code and keep your projects more organized. There are a number of scenarios where using a category is beneficial. Next question, what is extension in Swift? Extension adds new functionality to an existing class, structure, enumeration or protocol type. Extensions are similar to categories in Objective C. This includes the ability to extend types for which you do not have access to the original source code. Unlike Objective C categories, Swift extensions do not have names. Swift ex extensions can do following things. First one, add computed instance properties and computed type properties. It can define instance methods and type methods. It can provide new initializers. Define subscripts. Define and use new nested types. Make an existing type conform to a protocol. In Swift, you can even extend a protocol to provide implementations of its requirements or add additional functionality that conforming types can take advantage of. Question number 37. Arabic language support in application or mirror effect in UI of the application. So how we can achieve this? In app delegate, there is a method, application did finish launching. So in that method, we, we have to write this line, UI view dot appearance dot semantic content attribute is equals to first right to left. It will create a mirror effect in your UI. Next, how to write an optional value in Swift? So an optional that can hold either a value or no value. Optionals are written by appending a question mark. Check the example here. Here I have mentioned name with an optional type string with a question mark at the end. This is how we can define optional in Swift. Next question, how to unwrap the optional value in Swift? This is the most important question, I guess. So the answer is to use the wrapped value inside an optional, you have to unwrap it. The simplest way to unwrap an optional value is to add an exclamation after the optional name. This is called force unwrapping. Check the first example. Here I have used exclamation mark to unwrap an optional value, which is name. It returns the value inside the optional as the original type, but if the optional is nil, it causes a runtime crash. So here if the name is equals to nil and if I force unwrap that name value, then it will crash at runtime. With this exception, unexpected nil. Next question, use of if let statement in Swift. By using if let, we can unwrap an optional in safe way. Otherwise, nil, it may crash the app sometimes. So here we are unwrapping the optional value in a safe pattern. So as you can see in the example, I have written if let condition for the name, which is optional variable. So I'm unwrapping the optional in a, in a safe manner. So in case if I'll find this name nil, then my application will not crash. It will not go under the if block. Next, what is the significance of question mark in Swift? So the question mark is used during the declaration of a property can make a property optional. These are various ways by which these questions are being asked in the interview. Question number 42, use of guard. So guard provides early exit and does not allow any code if the condition is false. One more very important thing is there, you can use guard constant or variable outside the block of guard, which you can't do with if let or if where. So here you can check the example. I have declared guard let unwrap name and I can use that unwrap name variable outside the guard block. 
नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन वॉट इज अ डबल क्वेश्चन मार्क इन स्विफ्ट सो डबल क्वेश्चन मार्क इज फॉर प्रोवाइडिंग डिफॉल्ट वैल्यू फॉर अ वेरिएबल विच कैन बी नल विदाउट डबल क्वेश्चन मार्क वी हैव टू राइट द कोड लाइक दस इफ ए इज नॉट इक्वल्स टू नल देन क्वेश्चन मार्क फोर्स अनरैप ए वेरिएबल और यूज द बी वन दिस इज अ टर्नरी ऑपरेटर इन विद डबल क्वेश्चन मार्क वी जस्ट नीड टू राइट ए डबल क्वेश्चन मार्क बी सो इन केस इफ ए इज नल देन इट विल ऑटोमेटिकली टेक द वैल्यू ऑफ बी विच इज अ डिफॉल्ट वन नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन वट इज ऑप्शनल चेनिंग इन स्विफ्ट ऑप्शनल चेनिंग इज नथिंग बट इट इज अ वे ऑफ रिट्रेविंग वैल्यू फ्रॉम द चेन ऑफ ऑप्शनल वैल्यू सो इट कुड बी मल्टीपल ऑप्शनल वैल्यूज ऑप्शनल चेनिंग कैन बी एज लॉन्ग एज रिक्वायर्ड ऑप्शनल चेनिंग वर्क इन सच अ वे दैट इफ एवरीथिंग आफ्टर द क्वेश्चन विल ओनली बी रन इफ एवरीथिंग बिफोर द क्वेश्चन मार्क हैव द वैल्यू इफ एनी ऑफ द वैल्यू बी नल देन द चेन विल ब्रेक एंड नॉट कंटिन्यू टू फैच अदर वैल्यूज Optional chaining provides an alternative way to access the value of number of rooms. To use optional chaining, use a question mark in place of the exclamation mark. Check the example written here. Next question: What is optional binding? Optional binding is how we have optional values and how we unwrap those values. Hence, use optional binding to find out whether an optional contains a value, and if so, to make that value available as a temporary constant or variable. Some people do that by force unwrapping. Problem is that if the value of that optional is nil, then your code will crash, as we have already seen that in in our previous question. So to save your uh, save yourself, and if you don't want to make your code crash, then you should use the if let condition while you are unwrapping your optional. So optional binding is a way to unwrap an optional with if let condition. Here I have written an example of the same. You can check. So this is it for this video. If you want me to include your questions or queries kindly mention it in the comment section below I will cover those questions in my upcoming videos also subscribe to this channel to get notified of new videos added to this channel as i said in my previous video if you want to read these questions and answers instead of watching this video i have already uploaded a blog on the same on my website as well and the link is available in the description below you can refer it from there Thanks for watching I'll see you all in my next video till then bye bye